What's up guys, welcome, Chris Lado. Today's video will be a kind of quick fact or fiction video. Is this fake or real? Uh, this is from my Twitter account. So I'm active on Twitter, trying to be more active. This is from Kay Lee. Thank you, Kay Lee, for posting this. TR3B Astra in Afghanistan, 720p from YouTube, probably fake. I think it is probably fake. Love you guys, all you patrons. Thanks for all your support. As always, just being here with an open mind and watching the video is the best form of support. Let's get to the video. It was in March 2014 in Jalalabad, District, Afghanistan. Filmed by US soldiers. Let's see about that. Triangle UFO. This looks like Afghanistan. I've never actually been to Afghanistan, uh, but I've heard, watched many videos. It's high altitude fighting high up in the mountains, low air, so very dangerous for helicopters. They can't carry equipment. People get altitude sickness. And here we go, TR-3B oh, putting out flares, because even though it's an alien spacecraft, it needs to decoy those IR missiles. And here's the follow-on jet. So that's the main video. He had some cool sound effects and freaky music at the end. How do I know it's uh, how do I know it's fake? There's a couple of, couple of major giveaways. The first one I already mentioned it is the flares. Okay, so why is an alien craft putting out MGU-50 flares? These are the normal flares that we use to decoy IR missiles. So if anybody has an infrared uh, passive man pad, man portable launcher, they're super dangerous. Those are the stingers that the CIA sold to Osama bin Laden back to screw over the Soviets. It worked very well, okay, because they're passive. You can't detect. You have to actually just see the missile launch. It's very difficult to see a missile launch during the day. Um, so really, you have to get it in time, get, get those flares out. So first was the flares. Why are these guys uh, flaring? Uh, and then I also learned from my Russian fakes video. Remember, I bit off, if you watch my channel for a while, I bit off on this... Uh, <laughs> From the KGB, secret files of the KGB, Roger Moore, there was a fake UFO footage in there. And I was I actually caught it because at the beginning, I, I noticed some artifacts, um, weird artifacts when, when the CGI craft was put into the system. If we go back to the beginning here of Premier Pro, this, yeah, looks like Afghanistan. This looks like a JTAC position, Joint Terminal Attack Controller. Basically, they're on the ground and we coordinate with them to... to coordinate all the fighting. The perspective from the air is very difficult. It's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to really figure out what's going on, on the ground. If you imagine you're sitting in an airliner looking down, that's what we're seeing in our fighters. Okay, so it's very difficult just to figure out what city they're really talking about. You know, do you do you see the bridge? You know, Bridgie is your target that was famous in, in Korea, South Korea. So it's very difficult, very, very difficult. And you need trained people on the ground that can that can talk. They know how to talk the right language. They use the right coordinates. Uh, they make sure there's no fratricide, et cetera. So this is one of those positions. It's up high on a mountain, okay? So they have a good, good perspective of everything down into the valley. They have the high ground, essentially. And that's really what aircraft give you is the, is the, the high ground. Space is the ultimate high ground. Uh, but for us, we're, we're going to be coordinating, and these guys are usually trained, very trained. At the end of a mission, okay, so we've been working with these guys, say, the same same JTAC uh, for, you know, could be anywhere from an hour up to five or six longer hours during long missions. They'll ask at the end, you know, hey, hey, sir, can you can you give a, a show of force or pass by? They'll, they'll, really, a show of force is, is our first action to go down low try and scare the bad guys, stop anything from, from happening, really to stop the fighting. But we'll also do it at the end just to do something for fun. If it's been, you know, kind of a uh, not intense day, then we'll fly, we'll fly close by overhead. And that's what I see here is there's a flight lead going down first. He puts out flares basically, and then the trailer's in the back. So JTAC positions, they're always gonna have the high ground so that they can see everything, right? They can see clearly in this valley and they can talk our eyes on the targets and they can make sure that we're attacking the right target. So always important, probably difficult to get up here. Close air support, always, always in close coordination with these people. It's required actually before we can do any sort of uh, weapons employment in most, in most uh, engagements. The reason we fly low is so that we're not just up high. Imagine this is a mountain. Okay, I have my, my mountain side here. Imagine this is a mountain. Okay, if we're up in the blue sky now, very easy to see, very easy to see identify, target, and shoot. Okay, so this is very dangerous, okay? So what's much better is 
this side of the mountain, right? This is called direct terrain mask. There's no line of sight between the target uh, and the missile system or whatever is trying to uh, target us, right? This is direct line of sight. There are actually missiles that can fly over the mountain and pick you up. Okay, these are the new terrifying uh, SAM systems. They have, they have radars built into their nose. So they can actually, as long as they know you're basically there, they'll shoot the missile and now listen to the missile while it tries to find you. This is direct terrain masking. Okay, so what we're seeing here is actually indirect terrain masking. Okay, so the point of low altitude flying, right, is we're going really fast, really low. We don't give anyone a chance to respond. So it's a, it's a surprise attack, okay? And even if they know you're coming, maybe they can't know exactly where you're coming. Uh, and if you can do indirect terrain masking now, right? So I don't want to be up here, because again, very easy to see, very easy to spot. But now if I'm here, it's going to be harder for you to pick me up visually. It's going to be harder for you to target me with things. Your infrared trackers, you know, maybe they bite off on the, on the hot ground, etc. So we always want to be indirect masking. And so when we go over a ridge, okay, you don't just fly over a ridge like this and then just bunt over. Okay, you do the slow bunt whenever you'll just be way up high, okay? So when we do an actual ridge crossing, what we do is offset, fly as close as we can to the mountain, okay, at an angle. And now I'm gonna over rotate 135 degrees. And before I get to the top, I'm gonna to start pulling down, okay, because it's about a half mile radius. And now I'm gonna pull, 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 and then roll out and then stay as close to the mountain, mountainside as I can. Okay, we can't go 180 degrees. So many guys have died, okay, there's been a lot of accidents down low. It's very dangerous especially in training. So we're limited by training rules to 135 degrees, okay? But that's what we'll do. We'll go over a ridge, pull, pull down hard, okay? You know, five, six Gs, okay, pull down hard, roll out, and now fly down the mountainside. It, it's, it is quite fun. And so that's what I'm expecting here, okay? So as we zoom in and go over the horizon, let's see what happens. So now let's just zoom in, go frame by frame real quick here, okay? So you'll see this is where that ridge, this is that ridge which I was just talking about. I think the fighters, they basically just descended down and they're flying here or they did that ridge crossing whenever I'm talking about, came around this ridge and then turned and now they're staying close to the ridge using that indirect terrain masking uh, that I talked about, okay? So now we can see here, I see a little artifact there, okay? I think this is this is from uh, the, F, the fighter, I believe it's an F-16. Okay, and you'll see artifacts there. I think whoever made this, the CGI artist, basically uh, masked that. Okay, because now it goes away, there's nothing there. Okay, and now you start to see the TR-3B forming right here. That's where he kind of grazed it out. And now all of a sudden, a bing, TR-3B, okay? So if we go back again, we follow it. I'll just keep clicking. You can kind of see as it's tracking here, tracking here. And then I think it's, it's basically caught in there. So go real time now, it's fast, right? It's very fast, very fast how that happens. Okay, but I, but I think those are the artifacts uh, you can clearly see there. And now the next big thing is the flares, okay? I love how this alien craft has to shoot out a flare right when he's in a cool position to show. So this is an MJU flare. That's what we use to decoy IR missiles. We use chaff, which is like little uh, cut pieces of metal to decoy radars. And then we use these things called flares. Uh, it's very hot, burns super hot, uh, and then burns out about four to five seconds. This will decoy because it's hotter, right? It's hotter than our engines and it's put in a certain frequency that matches enemy systems, okay? This is just one flare, normally we put out programs of flares, so multiples to, to decoy different systems. So this shows me that it's just kind of like a training environment, or at least they're not worried about getting shot here. Uh, he's very, he's pretty high. He's, he's almost, uh, you know, I'd say probably 5,000 feet AGL almost, 4,000 feet AGL. So pretty high. He's not too concerned uh, about threats. So he's just putting out one flare to look cool. You know, and it shoots out. It's basically, we have 30 flares in a bucket. It's like a little one and a half centimeter uh, square. And when you push a little uh, HOTAS, switch, CMDS switch, countermeasure dispense switch, uh, it'll activate a little shotgun primer and it shoots out this flare, okay? And we can watch it as it goes there, kind of descends. And it'll smoke for a while, you actually see the smoke. Here's another one, let's see this one. Boom, it goes out. Yeah, so that's how it goes. That it, it, it basically, he shoots it out here, kind of flows, flows, flows along, and then it burns out. So that is a normal flare that we use MJU 50 flare, okay? So I don't know why the guy would be flaring. Also context in video, I mentioned context before, like if that was a real alien craft, I'm pretty sure this dude wouldn't just be like, 
All right, man, making sure I'm zoomed in on the sucker, you know? As he turns around, I think he'd be like more blown away. Okay, but now we see the second fighter. And this is, it looks like an F-16 to me. Okay, so this is where he's coming down lower now. So he's going lower through the valley. He's not up high. He probably didn't know exactly. He's probably the wingman. Maybe not, didn't know exactly where this, this position was on the ground. I, I assume he did, but anyway, he flies by. And if we zoom in as well on that, I can show you why I think it's, a, it's an F-16. It's really kind of how he moves. I can't really tell here, right? I can tell it's not a big fighter, but it is hard to tell with the ranges. Almost looked like he put out a flare there. And so here's where I can tell really where it's, where it's a Viper. So let's zoom in on that. Let's zoom in on that. Can you see it? I see one tail there and it looks like he's putting out a flare. Maybe tough to see. Looks like a flare. And then we, we, we step through, right? So this is how you do gun counting, right? I'll just count through frame by frame. Did I hit or not? Okay, now he's turning, he's banking away. Tough, right? There, that looks like a Viper to me, actually. So that, I can see, if I show you other videos, uh, I can just see that kind of plan form, single, single uh, tail is what it looks like to me. I wouldn't shoot at this, okay, based off that ID, okay? You gotta be sure if you're gonna shoot. But I would say it's probably an F-16 and maybe, uh, maybe an F-18, but yeah. Anyway, I think it's a Viper. Uh, and that's the wingman flying through. They're in a trail formation, kind of this lazy trail. Okay, two miles, one and a half miles separated is what, is what I would say. So again, it doesn't feel like a very tactical situation to me. I don't, I don't think these guys are worried about getting shot at here uh, or something like that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like it. If you, if you like these type of videos, I can make more of them in the future. Uh, they're pretty fun to make. So thanks to Kay Lee for sending that as well. Like it if you like it. Write any uh, inputs in the comments or other uh, videos you want me to check out. Thanks again to all my patrons. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Peace.